So in the lamp, our rubidium atoms rapidly de-excite and emit photons of a discrete energy. These photons leave the rubidium lamp and pass down the optical rail and enter the rubidium chamber, circularly polarized. Inside the rubidium chamber, atoms readily absorb photons. Since we're in the presence of an external magnetic field, our Zeeman states are distinguishable. Incoming photons promote electrons to excited states and increase their MF value by one. Remember, when electrons de-excite, they don't have to decrease their MF value. So over time, we keep exciting and de-exciting until we end up with a bunch of rubidium atoms with the valence electrons in a ground state, but they're at their highest possible Zeeman level. They're stuck. They can't move up to a higher level because there's no MF state for them to promote to. Without absorption, photons pass right through our gas and reach our detector. The gas is transparent. You may be asking yourself how we get these atoms stuck in their high Zeeman state to de-excite this little energy step and simulate absorption. What we need to do is apply an oscillating magnetic field with energy equal to the energy spacing. We're talking about small energies here, on the order of radio waves. Our applied perturbing field jostles the atoms out of their slightly increased MF equals 3 energy level, and our sample is once again free to absorb rubidium photons. We've depumped the system. As long as the perturbing RF field remains on, the system is continuously depumped. Photons emitted in the rubidium chamber are scattered in all directions. Very few reach our detector. The gas is opaque. We turn off the RF field and the gas returns to its optically pumped state. Remember, the spacing of these levels differs for each isotope of rubidium, so for a given external magnetic field we expect two magic RF energies. One to depump the RB87 present in the gas, and another to depump the RB85. By measuring the intensity of the light reaching the detector, we can tell if the system is pumped or depumped. An abundance of photons reaching the detector means that they're passing through the optically pumped rubidium. In the absence of a magnetic field, there's no Zeeman splitting, which means no optical pumping. What does this mean for our intensity? It's at its lowest because we have constant absorption and scattering. In collecting our data, we sweep the strength of the horizontal magnetic field in time. At some point, it exactly cancels the Earth's magnetic field, and we have no net magnetic field, which means no Zeeman splitting. Very few photons reach the detector. On our scope, this corresponds to the zero field dip. Sweeping the strength of our applied magnetic field varies the spacing of the Zeeman energy levels. We turn on the RF field at a constant energy, and then sweep our horizontal magnetic field. When the varying Zeeman energy spacing matches the applied RF energy, we get deep pumping. Our scope plot is essentially a plot of the rubidium gas transparency versus applied field strength. We see two dips in our transparency, one when the RB87 is depumped, and another when the RB85 is depumped. Turning off the sweep, we can manually adjust the horizontal magnetic field to its three minima and record the current at each point. From there, we can calculate the magnetic field strength. We set our RF field to another frequency and tune the B field strength to the photo minimum. We repeat this for several frequencies for both isotopes. Then what we do is switch the RF field on and off. When the RF field is on, the system is depumped. As soon as it turns off, the system begins pumping. By triggering the scope right when the RF field is turned off, we can watch the photo detector signal to measure the optical pumping time. Step one, we calculate the B field using this equation. B field is equal to this constant times the current through the coils. This is the number of turns of coils we have. This is the radius given by these two numbers. And we calculate the uncertainty of the B field by using the uncertainty of the current. 
Okay, step two. Take our experimental data and plot it. Resonant, B field, horizontal axis, R frequency, vertical axis, and the slope will be given by this. F, the frequency, is equal to the slope. The atomic G factor, mu naught, which is the permeability of free space, H, Planck's constant. Step three. Your scope plot should look something like this, where this is light intensity on the vertical axis, time horizontal, an exponential rise, should fit a curve looking something like this, 1 minus e to the minus t over tau, where tau is your characteristic, characteristic pumping time, and you should be able to use your graphical analysis program to calculate tau. Okay, for step number four, we look at a scope output of the light intensity from the cell with the RF off and the RF on. This decaying transient here is going to have a period which we can measure, and with that period for different RF inputs, we can plot one over period for each isotope. For the 87, it should look something like this compared to the 85. And the two slopes when you calculate them should give you for M85 divided by M87 approximate 1.5. Bon appétit! This is going to a physics video? Yeah! Yeah, this is awesome! Well, I gotta support the students. Saturday morning and it's time to go One day these could be the days but who could have known Loading in the back of a pickup truck Riding with the boys and pushing the luck Singing songs loud on the way to the game Wishing all the things could still be the same Shining someone's over the backstop Kakua on the ball and soda pop Well, we used to laugh a lot But only because we thought that everything good always was Nothing gonna change, there's no need to complain Sunday morning and it's time to go Been raining all night so everybody knows Over to the field for taco football Big hits, big hats, yeah, give me the ball Rain is pouring, touchdown scoring Keep on rolling, never boring Come on, come on, come on, chameleon We're talking kind of funny from helium well, We used to laugh a lot But only because we thought that everything good always would remain Nothing gonna change, there's no need to complain And on my toes do anything you can to dodge the bus stop blues Like driving a potato with the burnt out fuse Well, my best friend Kenny wants to go with you So meet her by the sugar mill after school My best friend Kenny wants to go with you Meet her by the sugar mill after school and We used to laugh a lot But only because we thought that everything good always would remain We used to laugh a lot But only because we thought that everything was